the, the initial idea for the film I was maybe uh, 10 years ago I saw an article online with a link to a website that said you could go talk to an artificial intelligent program and so I, I went to the website and had a chat with this you know this program basically but for the first 20 seconds I type you know it's like hey how are you good how are you doing fine what are you doing it's like I'm just talking to you 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 wanted to talk to me and like had this sort of like yeah banter and I was like for like the first 20 seconds like this thing is talking to me what it, it, it was funny it was responding and then after about 20 seconds I realized it was just sort of parroting things that it heard before and just a very cleverly written program but like a parrot just didn't have any, had didn't know what it was saying right and then it sort of devolved into just repeating stuff like Siri. So that was the so initial idea. It was like, what if a man falls in love with an artificial intelligent operating system? Just, you know, sort of based on that sort of buzz I got in that first 20 seconds. And then I didn't really think about it for a while. I went off and made Where the Wild Things Are. But during Where the Wild Things Are, I started coming back to that idea of more thinking about it as a relationship movie in a way to explore relationships. And then I think that's when it sort of turned into this, from this sort of, high concept idea to actually being about something and being something that I got really excited about writing notes on. And There's so many hilarious scenes that just jumped out right off the page. So we, al we always, it was never really, we always just kind of, if a scene was funny, we always just kind of went for the comedy of the scene. And then what I, luckily our actors were so good that they could kind of, from that, bring it back down to a sadder moment or a m more melancholy moment. And I mean, there's obviously humor and sadness and melancholy. And so I think, you know, with Joaquin and, and Spike's voice as the alien child, we were able to, <laughs> we were able to just that see. Was, that was my voice. Okay. <laughs> oh, they knew that, right? <laughs> Did anyone know that? Oh, okay. That was my cameo. I was, actually, when we, when, when we were writing, I couldn't stop doing it. No. I, <laughs> I like, it was like, Natalie, who's one of our producers, would, would be at my house with me as, as we were writing, and I would just, like, it was, it was so fun to be that character, and I'd be like, Natalie, I'm hungry, feed me, <laughs> order food, when are we eating? And when we were <laughs> editing, you would do that. Oh, yeah, I would do that. He it's, would give us notes as Alien Child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was part, it was a way to, like, release my anxiety. You know, it just seemed appropriate, you know, to, when he's, you know, in that place, when his, where he's in that place in his life where he's not, doesn't have the energy to be social, he's heartbroken and just doesn't want to put that kind of, you know, be, deal with people in that way. Just seemed like the kind of thing seemed particularly right to go home and play video games alone. And um, the uh, and then uh, and then in terms of making that game, it just like, I, I think, you know, I'd love to make, I don't know, it was like my chance to get to make a video game. I've never made a video game. And, uh, and, and actually the, I really over re overwrote the video game. Like, there's a, a probably a, like another six pages of story to that video yeah. game that we didn't even shoot because it's a whole, you know, it's a whole story about this, this, uh, these aliens that invade Earth, take over Earth, take over the planet, imprison us all, uh -huh. and we're in Thanks. jail. Uh -huh. And we realize, as you know, this is the whole introduction to the video game. Uh -huh. um, you know, it was this entire thing about this sort of the, the aliens have this collective consciousness and we have to go, to, to beat the aliens, we have to go inside the psyche of the alien. And then they're like, and you, and we, we, we've we selected a psychological warfare soldier and you are that soldier. And then you get launched into this, oh this game. Gosh. And I think the challenge every step of the way was to pull off, to make, to, 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 could we pull off a relationship movie where one person's not on screen? And I think that was like, you know, I think that was, I don't know, you could probably speak to that. Yeah, we always just, you know, we wanted to, we, Eric and I and Spike, we all just talked about approaching it as if it's, he's having a relationship with a woman he's just met. So it's not, it's not about this other being or this device. So, you know, one of our challenges was always, how do we edit a scene, a dialogue scene with two people, but there's only one person on camera. And we, we, we had the, all this beautiful language, all this beautiful footage that we could cut to of, of kind of atmospheric and beautiful like tonal um, imagery, and we used a lot of it. But we, we kind of realized that if, if we just hung on Joaquin, he could just kind of take you through an entire scene without needing to cut away to what he's thinking about in his mind. Because you could just there's a scene where he's talking to her in, in bed and he's talking about. He's met, he's has dreams about his ex-wife, and we we have all this amazing footage of the ex-wife and and him, but 
we would put it on there, but we'd realize that we could just, yeah, just stay, on, stay Joaquin. on Joaquin and he would just kind of get you through it without needing to cut away from him. I, when I sat down to write, I'd already made notes. I probably had like 50 pages of notes of like, and that's kind of the fun part is writing notes, like you, it can be anything. You don't have to edit yourself. It's like any idea is like a good idea and you know, like you don't have to like worry about how it's actually gonna fit into the movie. So I'd had like you know, 50 or 60 pages of notes and then I sat down and I'd say the first draft took about five months to get through that and, and, and as I was writing it, I left a lot of stuff out, you know, other ideas like that video game idea or just ideas that of operating systems in society and like sort of, I just kept going back towards the intimate and going back towards Theodore and Samantha's relationship and, um, and, then, and then probably for maybe next 10 months after that, I, I wrote more drafts. I just kept writing until we, you know, had to sort of lock. We never considered making her appear real, but we did consider in the same way we have those visual fragments that are his memory or visual fragments that are the dust or the things he's looking at. Like, that's one of the things we, you know, Jeff was talking about. Like, how much, you know, how much should we be on his face versus how much should we be on what he's seeing or thinking or remembering? And uh, we actually shot sort of his imagination where you never really got to see her. And um, it was just not that interesting. It was, it was, even as I was shooting, I was like, I didn't have that emotional connection to it. I was like, you know, that everything else I'm feeling, like you're, you're fil filming Joaquin, you're feeling, even the dust, I, the dust, I got that sort of, again, a, a buzz from, like, oh, this is exciting. Um, but I couldn't get, I never get, like on set, I didn't get that feeling from the, the woman that we shot. And, uh, and of course, we cut it yeah, out really it early on. Yeah, and it, it didn't, uh, Scarlett did such a great job becoming this person that you, you, could, you, you didn't, you didn't want to, you know, we always talked about, you didn't want to, to see a woman in a blue dress with blonde hair or you didn't, yeah, you, you didn't want it to, was whoever it was like you were novel. imagining. You want to have your own relationship with the, the image you create. And we, 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 the, when we were in pre-production, we started thinking about how we were going to create future LA. And I had this, I, I was excited by the idea of combining, collaging two cities together. And so we ended up going to Shanghai and using Shanghai, you know, very specific curated areas of Shanghai with very specific curated areas of Los Angeles. And um, I think it was the idea we were trying to make this very warm, tactile world with, with the, the materials and the fabrics and the woods and, and cr create this, this, this world that felt like this utopic world that everything's nice and everything's comfortable. Yet even in this world where you're seemingly getting everything you need and having this nice life, there's still loneliness and longing and isolation and disconnection and if I had to define what it, I'm picturing, it would be utopic, and that sort of started this tr this train of thought, which was, you know, sort of where we ended up and making this world that's comfortable, and nice and convenient, and you know, much like our world, but just a heightened version of our world where everything is getting nicer as the years go, and there's more design and there's more convenience, and our technology is making things easier, but uh, there's still this loneliness and longing. Change.